Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. And first of all, a very, very happy new year to you. Stay positive and I wish you well. But today we are talking about hair and hairstyles. Now you may think, why would I be doing a video around hairstyles? Um, let me just take a moment to, and I can just see a bit of annoying hair there, but let's just dump that down. Um, I would like to just first of all take a moment where I never thought my channel would get to the point of having 20, 30, 50 subscribers. Now I've got 200, and absolutely the amount of comments I get, I feel just well, sometimes I literally, it's almost like I have to pinch myself to think that, well, because I've never been a very confident person at all, to be quite honest with you. And to get the comments I do and to get the really lovely comments which I receive from all sorts of different people, which is just incredible. And actually from all around the world. Um, that's just mesmerizing. It really is that somebody's actually watching my channel. So the whole reason why I'm doing this clip is because I've received so many comments about my hairstyle, my choice of products which I use, the styles I wear. Um, I've, I've had different uh, amazing, amazing comments of people who are not are not feeling great. They're not feeling confident because they may have hair related problems such as hair loss, hair thinning, you name it. Um, and I and I've received those comments, and I absolutely, ultimately try my best to put my heart and soul into every sort of comment where there's a question put to me, or you can really feel that somebody's going through something. Um, that for me is just absolutely amazing. My whole my whole sort of ethos for my channel is to be open and honest, and it's a tool for me. Uh, it's a tool for me to, to deal with life, to be quite honest with you. Um, and that's why on my front page of my channel it says, um, "My channel, another tool um, to help me with the bumpy, or help me along the bumpy road of life." Which it just is that good, bad, everything which comes along. So I wanted to uh, just sort of fill the the comments and my subscribers who have mentioned to me, have uh, left comments for me about my choice of hairstyle um, in regards to colour, in regards to thickness, my Viviscal journey with my hair getting thicker, um, my choice of products, and I've had a lot of comments around what I, I do with my hairstyle, and I thought to myself, well, we're now in 2021, I have got some plans, I mentioned that on my Happy New Year uh, video, but um, I really wanted to just take a time and really go into that a little bit. So, for example, yep, it is 2021, and New Year's are all about change, what's going to change. So my New Year's uh, video, my Happy New Year video, I mentioned about change, what I want to do in my life, in my career, that type of thing. But let's talk about hair. So for me, hair is a very, very important thing. Um, it's not because I'm vain, it's not because I'm confident. I always think in confidence, fake it until you're there, and then <laughs> you can surprise yourself and you can surprise others. Um, but help everybody along the way and then you can't go wrong. But in terms of hair, for me why it's so important is because it sets your impression, it gives the impression when you meet somebody, their choice of style, their choice of how they're wearing their hair, and the colour, the style, all sorts of things, it tells you about their character, it tells you about all sorts of things about that person, and that's why I like it, because it sets this sort of, the expectation of something almost immediately. Now we should never judge, that's not to say that I'm telling people that you should go out there and you should judge people on their hairstyle, that's not what we're talking about here at all. It's just that you can kind of tell what type of interest somebody has through how they wear their hair, through what they do with their hair, um, and I just find that's incredible. So that's something which I would really like. Now I was gifted with natural sort of fine thin hair, I have lots of it though. So I love trying out all different styles. I love trying out all different products, which which help the scalp environment, which help sort of give you the thickest possible hair, which gives you the best possible hair. Now this year I made a huge, huge change. And I say this year, last year rather, I made a huge change to my hair. So I started taking Viviscal and I took that for nine months. I don't take it anymore just so I can give my, my body a break. I feel I don't need to take that anymore, but it would certainly be something I would recommend if you noticing problems with your hair in terms of quality, in terms of the growth rate of your hair, in terms of thickness. Or if you've got an area of your hair where you know used to be thicker or you've got an area of your hair which is just a bit unruly and it's getting a bit thinner, it's getting a bit dry, you're not feeling particularly yourself, perhaps you're a little bit down, with lockdown and everything at the moment with the COVID situation, or perhaps you just want to give your body that ultimate boost of the nutrition which we need to have healthy hair. Viviscal is going to be absolutely amazing for that. Always speak to a medical professional first of all, and I'll be very honest, I can't categorically absolutely 
tell you 100% that it will work. But here's hoping it will work for you like it did for me. So give that one a try or at least have a look at it as well. This year, what I want to do is I want to try a couple of things different in regards to my hair as well. So a lot of people have commented on my channel in regards to my hair colour. So this is not natural, obviously. Um, I have had highlights and I've had highlights three times, I believe. But I've left it, um, I've left it quite a way in between each one. Um, I have not damaged my hair at all. Viviscal has, which is the hair growth supplement we were just talking about, has allowed my hair to get stronger and much more healthier. And I truly believe without Viviscal and without taking the right care to look after your hair, I would not have highlighted my hair because I would have just never thought, thought that my hair was healthy enough to do that. So the highlights are great. But as I say, my channel was all about honesty. And with the utmost of integrity, I am going to be truthfully and honest with you that I'm actually falling out of love with the blonde now, to be quite honest with you. Um, and it will be something which I will not be having done again. So I had this done just before Christmas and I wanted to have that for the Christmas festive season, sort of the, the holiday period of having really nice white sort of, I say white, silvery sort of blonde toned highlights, which I had. Now, and within about a week, um, I can literally already see the regrowth, um, which is fine, absolutely fine. But for how much it costs, um, there's the cost of the haircut, there's the cost of the highlighting, which, to be quite honest with you, together is around about the £60 mark to the place where I normally go. Now, that's pretty average, I think, for men and women's hair, to be quite honest with you. Highlighting can be quite costly. Um, here in the UK, you can, I believe, you can, when I've done research, I mean, you can, you can pay anything from £30 all the way up to £150. I've seen those prices for different, different establishments for all different sort of uh, high end sort of to your, your favourite, uh, your, your favourite hairdressers or your favourite barbers, which you've gone to all your life. Um, and it's an expense. It is costly. It looks fantastic. Um, but you know, my biggest bugbear about having lighter hair is that it's amazing when you step out the shop two three days bang what hits me in my hair is the natural yellow which throws back which nobody tells you that do they nobody tells you that when you look on youtube and you look at hairstyles or you look at all these different people with really nice hair colors and things they don't they're not very quick to show you the aftercare um, and like these these different sort of celebrities and stars who have all these really cool sort of awesome hairstyles and things like that like very often in some of the films like I really really liked uh, the longer length style on um, oh, what's his name I can't remember his name but for example the stars which I'm trying to think of isn't you know like out of some of the films like with um, um, oh, I'm absolutely stuck. So, for example, like the, the longer style with Brad Pitt and those sort of type of styles. You get what I'm trying to say anyway. Those sort of longer length styles where they have those really nice sort of blonder or whiter highlights through. Um, and of course, they look really, really cool. Yeah, they do. <laughs> and for the first couple of weeks, they're really, really cool. And they are really, really great until you start to having to take care of the throwback of the yellow, the brassiness in there, then the products get a little bit more expensive. Um, and then sort of the aftercare, sort of you have to take a lot more time. You have to take a lot more time to make sure the hair's moisturized, conditioned, um, moisture in the hair rather with conditioner. And I found having to use oils, sort of leave-in conditioner sprays. Sounds negative. It's not meant to be negative. We're just talking about my sort of thoughts for changing of hair throughout 2021. So I will be waving goodbye to the blonde as it gradually grows out. I've not necessarily made my mind up yet if I would sort of dabble with colour to get rid of it or um, if I would just let it grow out naturally. But I certainly won't be having my hair highlighted um, anymore. It may well be something I revisit for the summer, but if I do, it will only be at the start of the summer and then sort of growing out. So you've got that sort of natural look. It won't be something which I would just sort of keep on top on top of because to be quite honest with you when you've got dark hair i really don't understand how you can because uh literally after about a week i've got like a black root line straight away from most of my hair is sort of highlighted quite light and silvery in the front and the blacks um it's not black at the back sorry the back is much darker and it's sort of put through sort of um, a little bit more sort of sparing. It's not so much colour at the back. It's just sort of gradual and sort of just dabbed in. Whereas the front is really quite sort of silvery and quite ultimately really nice, that real nice vivid cool blonde. Now right at the start I had a choice if I wanted to go like a more of a traditional sort of blonde or if I wanted like a real 
cool blonde. When I say traditional blonde, I mean a bit more of like a warmer tone, and I didn't want that. I wanted it to be really ice and cool. Um, in more ways than one. So cool in how you look and a cool icy sort of almost like a grey colour and that's what I've achieved. And the product which I can thank which keeps my hair to that tone is the Flanola No Yellow Shampoo. That stuff is absolutely incredible. A little bit more expensive than your average shampoo but I absolutely urge you if you have blonde highlights and you're sat there thinking yeah I'm feeling exactly the same way then invest in that because that is an absolute product which looks after your hair. It really really does. And I think ultimately for me um, I like how it looks on me with the highlights and things, but it's, I also like darker hair because I think for me, sort of traditionally, I've always really loved wearing those 1910s, 1920s, slick back home side styles, um, that real nice groomed, real traditional sort of smart look, which I, I feel really, really comfortable with. Now, I really, really like the highlights in my hair, and if I could sometimes have that hair one day and then the nice traditional smart slick back look with the dark hair another day that would be amazing but sadly hair does not work like that does it um so that's going to be changing that's going to be changing uh and as i say i'm not sure whether or not i would sort of involve color to transform it back i'm not i'm not sure yet i don't I'm not, i don't think about sort of the color that much to be quite honest with you i think i'm just going to naturally let that grow out with having taken Viviscan and things, my hair is really healthy. It's got to the point where it's much more thicker. If you remember rightly, when you watched my channel, my concerns were slightly behind my hairline. This area up here, not the crown, the sort of the top of my head almost, and just areas where ultimately I wanted a bit more thickness. And I can really, really feel that. My hairline is nice and full, um, and there isn't really a part of my hair now where, I mean, my part in here is... As you can see, I've got it sort of off one time and then I come uh, today, I've got it off on one side. So I've got nice volume in the front here and then swooping over. Then the back, I've sort of gone a slight angle and then a line here just so I can brush it all down through quite naturally. This is much more fuller. And you can see because even the highlights don't even make it look thin. Um, so that Viviscal absolutely have so much to thank for that. Absolutely brilliant. Um, but going into 2021, that's not the only style which I would like to try. So I want to grow the lighter hair out. What I'm doing right now is I'm growing the sides out. So for a very long time, for many, many years since I was a teenager, I always had an undercut and I love an undercut. So nice length hair on top, super, super short at the sides. This is usually a zero and I can grab hold of this hair now and this is getting longer, it's getting longer. And I'm just sort of trying to explore with growing the hair out a little bit. So I wear hearing aids. Um, I haven't got hearing aids in right now because unfortunately I've got a bit of a problem with my ears. So I'm not able to put my hearing aid in right now. Um, but it's getting better. Um, but I'm, I'm sort of playing with the idea of growing this out a little bit and having it a little bit sort of choppy, a little bit sort of not super, super long, but just so I've got a bit of length here and then at the back growing it sort of down, tape it into my sort of neck just so it sort of kicks out ever so slightly. So I've got that nice sort of swooping length, a little bit like what I've got here, but just about maybe an inch, maybe two inches longer. I'm saying that right now, some days where I get a little bit stressed out or if I'm busy with work, having longer hair, of course, takes a lot more time to style, a lot more time to look after, particularly when it's lighter. So right now that's what I want to do. But then come the summer, what I was thinking is having my whole hair sort of cut short and growing up, I always had like a real short, uh, a real short sort of like tapered cut and then sort of a slight part in flicked off to one side and then sort of short and spiky all the way through my hair. That might well be something I would look at in the summer um, for a bit of a change, ultimately, um, because I really, really like that style. And I haven't had that style for quite some time. I think it's been a couple of years since I've had that style. And I really, really like that. Um, and just for that ultimate freshness, that youthful sort of feeling as well, just because I'm still going through some health problems. And I know now with lockdown and things, it's probably going to be about the summertime where it's all going to happen. Um, so quite a, a long sort of recovery period and things. So I might not necessarily be able to sort of spend so much time doing that. And to be quite honest with you, I might not want to after going through um, things with, I've got some problems with my leg and things through having past failed hernia surgeries. So that's another thing coming up in regards to my hair. Will we be looking at products this year? Absolutely, yes, of course. I enjoy that. That's one of my huge favourite things to do on my channel is to look at all different products for hair, for styling hair, for condition of hair, um, hair growth treatments, that type of thing. Um, and I've got some things planned absolutely for that. So 
And once again, what makes me want to continue doing that is because of all the amazing comments I get. I have 200 subscribers now. Never in a million years did I think I'd get two, let alone two subscribers. So that's brilliant. So that's something else I really want to do. Will I be going back to the uppercut look? Sometimes I get a moment where I think to myself, why am I doing this? I just want to go back to the uppercut look. Why am I saying uppercut? Undercut, sorry. So longer on the top and then <laughs> longer on the top and then short, super short, short at the sides. Because don't forget, this hair isn't from the sides. This hair is from the top. All of this used to be an undercut. This used to be super, super short. So as you can see, look, I'm even from my viviscar, I'm even getting shorter hairs grow in all through my hairline, which is great because you might not be able to tell. Again, this is just going to have to be something which I, I can't necessarily 100% categorically prove this, but it's just, it's a thing of trust, isn't it? I think. And you can kind of see that, I mean, this was my temple here. It's, it's not super thick. My hair's not super thick anyway. But as you can see, this, smudge those hairs there, but this, that bit there, what I'm trying to grab, this, since I've been taking the Viviscal, this is it. So that's that's kind of sort of the proof which I have on it. So yeah, all good. So I would say if anything happened this year, um, sort of health wise, if I get stressed or things, my hair does start to change, then I would certainly pick up Viviscal again. Um, maybe going shorter in the summer. Absolutely. Would be leaving colour well alone. Would I colour my hair again? I love super dark hair. Love super dark hair. I've got dark hair anyway, but I think the shine and the sleekness you get from coloured hair, I like. Um, but no plans. No plans at all at the moment. Um, but but yeah, absolutely. So I hope you, in, in fact, actually, let's do something which I don't normally do. So I haven't got too much product in here, and I want to stay really truthful and really, really honest on my channel. So when I say, because I had a lot of comments um, last year about saying, why are you talking about thin hair when you haven't actually got thin hair? No, I haven't got thin hair. I've got fine hair, which can sometimes feel thin, but I have lots of it. And you know what? Just if I brush my hair through, you can see it's not super thick at all. But if I brush my hair, there is a lot of volume to it now because of how I've had it styled. But you can see sort of like the silveriness, the silvery sort of look. You can sort of see it's not super thick. Absolutely, you can. But it's definitely got thicker from taking Viviscal. And if I just brush through the front here, you can see, you can see how ultra sort of can you see how sort of ultra silvery it is? Another thing which I've had done recently, you can just see on the ends here, this has been cut into quite a lot. Now the person who cut my who cuts my hair rather is the person who has cut my hair for many, many years. Um, and I'm unfortunately we're getting to the point now where rather than ask me, she will start cutting away before I've even had a conversation with her, which really, really annoys me. It's almost like that after a certain length, she likes then to cut it off. Um, so that might, I might even be changing who I actually have cut my hair. Let's all get through lockdown at the moment. Um, but that would certainly be on the cards as well, because that's really annoying me. Um, but since taking Viviscal, my hair getting thicker, I can afford to have my hair cut into a little bit. Whereas before, I would always stay away from that. Because um, working in retail banking, I remember having shorter hair once. And I had shorter cropped hair. And the lady who cuts my hair cut into it and sort of cut the weight out. And if you don't know what that means, that's like if you can imagine sort of hair this length. but several hairs throughout the middle being cut sort of short at all different lengths but yet the main length of the hair is still the same so you're cutting some of the weight you're cutting some of the thickness out and i remember serving a customer and i i, I bent over onto a desk and was signing something for a customer and in the computer screen as i managed to come back up and stand back up i caught a glimpse at the top of my scalp um where the the, the spotlight shines straight through my hair and i absolutely hated that so since then i like to try and stay away from overly cutting in and overly thinning out hair so i really really hate that so that's something which won't be happening this year at all i want to the ends i don't mind having a bit of texture cut into but certainly not when they get the, the thinning shears and they're starting here and they're going one two three four yeah don't be ridiculous with that absolutely not at all cutting into finer hair sounds crazy but actually it can if done right make the hair appear thicker because the shorter hairs make the longer hair stand up away make it a little bit more fuller but if it's done in moderation if it's done in moderation the last thing which I really want to mention is, as we are throughout lockdown, and there's going to be a couple of weeks now, or even a couple of months for us all, where we're in a situation where we're not going out all the time, one of the best things that we can do, and I love styling my hair, and I absolutely have it styled all the time, is when you are feeling that your hair is got to a stage where actually it could feel like it needs a bit of a break, let your hair just be hair. 
I don't mean walk around the house looking like you've absolutely got a straw nest on your head. I mean, literally, take a moment where you don't use heat so much, you don't use so many products at all, perhaps go to a bit more natural style and just literally switch down, down on how much and what you're doing to your hair. Because sometimes when I do that, I really, really notice the difference in my hair and the quality of my hair really, really improves. So that's all what will be happening in 2021 for my hair. So we may be going shorter, changing colour. No, leaving colour well alone. Yes, certainly highlights anyway. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Will I go back to an undercut this year? Don't know. Will I cut it all off? Might do. <laughs> um, but for now, we'll be growing it long and sort of playing and rocking a bit of a, an awesome longer cut. So for now, I won't be able to have a cut anyway because of lockdown here in the UK. Um, but I don't want it cut. Um, I'm going to grow it, grow it out sort of a little bit, have it nice, a nice sort of bit more of a, a longer length, a couple more inches on this, and I will be happy. And I hope, hope you sort of agree that that sort of look looks really cool, really quite awesome. Okay, thanks very much for watching this clip. I wish you a fantastic year ahead and let's stay strong. Let's hypothetically sort of really support each other throughout all of this, even if we can't be with one another. Keep talking and keep just being there for everybody. Huge, huge thing, isn't it? Just asking somebody, how are you? Okay, thanks very much for watching my clip and until next time, we will see you then. Bye now.